Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I got big updates for y'all on what's going on with Storm Ian. Matter of fact, you can almost see what I'm talking about. Not only is it still going to be a major hurricane for some areas, especially for Cayman Islands, very strong. Cuba, very strong. But look at here. Now, this is the same data that I get from the satellite on this software that everybody else, all these news stations, that everybody else sees. And as you can see, it does have it as a Cat 1 hurricane because it does downgrade quickly. But it has it as a tropical storm towards impact and a 71 miles per hour tropical storm. National Hurricane Center has it as a 74 miles per hour hurricane. Not much different from that. Pretty much a high-end tropical storm on impact. But that's so far what's been changing. Let me show you all the information that I did find. Now, so far, according to nan 3 k the the rain bands are going to start coming in for tomorrow. It's going to start around 10 till noon and just go all over southern Florida. Now, this will come early in the morning to the afternoon, also late in the evening to the early morning hours again for the next day. That's pretty much what y'all have until the storm gets a little bit closer. All these rain bands coming on for the next day and a half is going to give y'all a couple of inches of rainfall before the storm gets closer. And so far, we can see a well-defined eye in the center of this. And so far, it is right on the track. Earlier, NAM took it a little bit on the east side. The latest update, it put it a little bit west of this track of right where it's going. And the trend has been that it will do a turn, but eventually let go by the trough. And after it lets go, do a little bit of a northward push. And so far, what we see from National Hurricane Center in 24 hours in 48 hours, still the same location, right on the edge of Cuba, getting hurricane winds, max winds of 105 knots. A big wind field as this cold front comes in. But then you can notice from 48 hours to 72 hours, it does a northward push right up the east side of the Gulf of Mexico instead of turning. Now, this would put all the impacts east side loaded for florida and especially for tampa y'all have this very low shelf on the eastern side of gulf of mexico and as this is spinning counterclockwise it will shove all this onshore flooding of this all this storm surge right into the western side of florida so far the latest update it does have hurricane warnings out for cuba over towards havana and you have tropical storm warnings in the blue for cuba everybody else still the same hurricane warnings for Cayman Islands, Tropical Storm Watch. But as you see, it becomes a major hurricane for Cuba. But it, all this major strengthening, all this major intensification is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico and far west from the Florida Keys where it's not going to be any major hurricane impacts. Then it downgrades quickly to a hurricane, then a hurricane on landfall, barely holding hurricane status. 74.8 miles per hour winds, I will show you. And now I'm picking up on the same satellite information. It is actually 71. It is actually a tropical storm. It's actually like they don't want to let people know all this big hurrah and it's going to be tropical storm impacts. I think this hurricane, the main story is going to be some serious flooding. A lot of flooding and a lot of power outages. I'm still showing over here by western Florida, like Tampa, Cape Coral. Y'all still have some serious winds coming your way. And you can see the cone has shifted a little bit. So remember, it is east side loaded. So for the next 24 to 36 hours, as this moves this way, rain bands are going to be whipping over southern Florida, Florida Keys, even giving y'all chances for tornadoes as this comes closer and then really starts to do the majority of the damage up in this direction. And you see, it did stretch to right by Alabama, by Montgomery. It did stretch right below Atlanta and Augusta, Georgia. So it has got a bigger field of uncertainty of where it's going. But if you look at impact right by Tallahassee, it is showing 74.8 miles per hour winds. It is not showing some serious hurricane force winds. And I know that's very important to a lot of people in Florida. You should pre always prepare for anything, a tropical storm or a hurricane. But a lot of y'all would not have left your homes or done such things if you had known it was just going to be a cat one now this is subject to change all these cones are subject to change but the latest update is that it's going to burn itself out in the gulf of mexico and downgrade quickly 
pretty much to a high-end tropical storm on impact. Also, the latest on intensity guidance, all of them take it, almost all of them, take it up where it definitely is going to be a Cat 4 hurricane. Even the Cat 5, he kind of downgraded a little bit, saying it's not going to get that high. But still, they all take it up to a Cat 4 hurricane, then downgrade quickly. I even waited for the update. You can see in the update, most of them are taking it now to a high-end Cat 3 to a low end cat four so cat five definitely got taken off the table and it's showing a sign of weakening for the update but i think it is really going to be a serious serious flooding event and power outages so as you look at precipital water according to the euro you see how it strengthens up going towards cuba goes over landfall messes up just a little bit not too much all the high mountains is to the east but as that cold front comes look at how much rainfall it is bringing by the hour two and three inches of rainfall an hour as this comes up so far according to the euro now when you look with the euro you can see it comes up brings all this rainfall then right around wednesday all the way to wednesday morning we're going to be dealing with this all the way to the weekend it sits there and spins and brings a lot of precipitation all the way until thursday night so it's almost 36 hours of just sitting there and spinning before it heads a little further north, affecting Georgia, South Carolina, even the eastern side of Tennessee, Kentucky, some of the North Carolina as well. But you can see when you look at the pressure that it does gain good strength as it goes by the Caymans, by Cuba, gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it does get very strong. But according to the Euro, it gets right along the side of Florida come Wednesday morning. And now you're getting all the winds, all the rain, and it's just going right up Florida, almost like a saw blade, a weak saw blade. It's not going to be a major hurricane on impacts, but this storm is coming inland and stretching all the way across. You're going to have big waves on both sides of Florida as this goes down to the northern side. So as you look at the relative humidity, you can see right here on your lower level, also on your upper level, there's your 500 millibar there's your 850. So as you check for the dry air, as it goes to the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico with that lower shelf, still getting all this shear, the dry air don't quite wrap around it on the lower level, so it stays nice and strong. But in 500 millibar, you can see it wrapping around the southern side of the storm, even getting into the core just a little bit as it rides up Florida, weakening it greatly. So if it gets any weakening, it'll be from this dry air coming in the system, not to mention all the wind shear it is getting while it is on that lower shelf. But the rainfall is going to add up not only for Florida and everyone else, also for the southeast. There's a big high ridge all the way to the eastern side of Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. And so far, the peak winds. The wind gust has come down greatly. According to the Euro, the highest winds is 128 miles per hour. And that is right offshore right here. That is not on landfall. There is some high winds right here I will show you, but still, after that, everybody else is dealing with 50 miles per hour wind gusts. All this red is 60, the brown gets into 70, then 80s to 90s to that white. GFS has changed his story. So GFS also shows it goes into the Gulf, still becomes a major hurricane, but instead of a westward, it takes that eastward track with a stall at the same time. And it shows it will be all the way till Friday, before this finishes coming on land, still a tropical storm, tropical depression, still leaving a lot of impacts. But you can also see when you look at the relative humidity according to the GFS, that as it gets closer towards the eastern coast, that you do get some dry air that gets all the way inside. On the lower levels, it's nice and strong, but on the higher levels where it needs to breathe out and keep strengthening, you get some dry air right along the core as it gets a little eastern in the Gulf of Mexico. And it does wrap around it and get deep into its core right before landfall it's not 850 millibars so it's not all the way down it but it is all the way on top capping this system from growing anymore but also green it will bring a lot of rainfall by the hour two to three inches by the hour but look how quickly it dissipates comes in very hot dropping a lot of rainfall then all that dry air gets around the core of it shrinks it down to a hurricane to a tropical storm and just kills this storm. But also agreeing that it's gonna bring a lot of rainfall towards mid-Atlantic and the East Coast as well. So it's not just the landfall, it's after that 
a lot more rainfall for people. So I think it will be a very big flooding event. Even the winds by GFS has come down. It's taken the max winds 131 miles per hour way out here in the Gulf. That's why I said Cuba's going to feel it. Western Cayman Islands are going to feel it. But after that, everyone should be feeling tropical storm impacts except for chances for Western Florida to get in on those high winds and heavy rainfalls and very bad storm surge. But all the high winds are all off in the Gulf of Mexico. Even when you look at the control member once again, you can see the same thing as showing the same path and it's still showing it's going to take that Eastern path into Florida. Right where they always go. But I do have these zoomable links for y'all, always will, so you can go see how much rainfall you're getting in your area. Can you see according to the Euro, very heavy rainfall, especially for northern Florida. GFS takes it a little bit to the west, but it's still showing the southeast and the mid-Atlantic will get hit by both models. So far, the heaviest still being over here by Tampa towards Jacksonville, a little bit more of an angle instead of straight across. Still showing over a foot, especially Spring Hill as well. All y'all on the east side of this system as it comes across. So it's really going to bring a lot of storm surge, not just the inches of rainfall from the system. And with the winds as well, you can see GFS takes it a little bit western. Still showing the purple is 50, still got 50 miles per hour wind gusts according to GFS, according to the Euro as well for the rest of the southeast with the main impact being still the same area we've seen earlier it's going to be anywhere from sarasota to 110 115 miles per hour wind gusts all the way up towards spring hill where it drops down a little bit to 90. so this link is in the description please go use it go to your area click into your neighborhood and see exactly what's going on for you so I thought that update, y'all would really enjoy knowing that more than likely other than the impacts that we could see on Western Florida, which looks like the worst as far as the winds and the flooding, that it has downgraded on what the impact would be as it comes on landfall. So I think it really will be not only for the winds for the Western Florida, from what we can see, a big flooding event. So all the time and date is right here on the top left. So you can see what it is you're seeing right here with NAM 3K. I think I do notice that these rain bands will come through for tomorrow afternoon, early morning, early afternoon, then again late tomorrow night into the next morning. Then I think we need a live stream before any more rain bands come in and start really knocking out y'all power. So it might be a little too early when I do do it, but it's hard to tell when to start because it's right on the edge. However, I will be there for you. I will always be there for you. God bless all of you going through this. I pray the best for all of you. Now today, I want to talk about verses 1 through 5, Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy love and kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night, upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Amen. The Lord hears your prayers, guys. You think this weakened just by accident? I don't. <laughs> a lot of people would argue that, but I don't. God bless you all. May God forgive us all. All glory. All glory goes to Yahweh. Now and forever. For we need him more than ever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even so, Lord, weaken this even more.